Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome on our breakout session on uh, how hybrid working will evolve and what is the impact of hybrid working on our business. So, uh, we have the, the, the luck to be on stage with two industry experts. So, next to me, I have Tom Engelen, Engels, who is from Telindus NL. He has more than 20 years' experience in networking and is the one. And on the, uh, next to Tom, we have Angel Santos from Fortinet, who also has years, a ton of experience in the industry. So I'm very glad I have two very big experts next to me. So let's dive in this top topic, Tom, and let's see where we go and start off with the impact of hybrid work. So uh, thank you, Christoph. Um, so what is happening um, in uh, the market? Uh, for first of all, over the past years, we all started working in the cloud. So we are in the middle of a cloud shift. And um, uh, a year ago or a few years ago, we had an un unwanted visitor, uh, the COVID pandemic. And that overnight uh, changed us um, from uh, office workers to remote workers. We had to work from home. And whether you call it remote work, hybrid work, uh, work from anywhere um, or um, from home, it is here to stay. So the, the way we work totally changes. We work from the McDonald's when we have lunch and the function of the office has changed. The office is a place where we meet colleagues, where we meet customers, uh, where we build new innovative services, uh, develop products, work together. And there's no use to uh, take an Excel sheet to the office. Concentration work is done from home. I work for Telindus in the Netherlands. This is how our um, um, map looked in 2019. We had one office centralized in Utrecht. And nowadays we have 230 offices in the Netherlands. One centralized and 229 home offices. We work from anywhere. We can even work abroad in the sun um, when, when, when your work allows it. Due to this cloud shift and the work from anywhere, we use the corporate network in a different way. Software as a service uh, solutions, uh, public cloud services, are um, we connect directly to them. We do not use the VPN to go to the corporate network to get connectivity to, to the software as a service uh, solutions, for example. During a pandemic, when uh, a regular sales guy uh, had to work, he had to, what, what did he need? He needed uh, office, uh, teams, sales force. So there was no use for him to connect to the office every day. And that's really a threat in, uh, for the way um, IT departments used to run their networks. Connectivity was essential to push, push updates and make sure that everyone was uh, safe. Because the third um, thing happening is that the, the, the attack service um, becomes a lot, a lot bigger. Cyber threats are growing. And, this, and the service is bigger, so we need to do something. Indeed, Tom. So you will see, uh, we, Tom has already now explained the number of use cases eh, where we, we have an impact and what is this uh, causing for our uh, solutions and our uh, companies to have a, a good view of that impact. So also, maybe something I forgot in the beginning, on the seats you will find a small card and this card will lead you to a bingo where all those impacts that John just described or mentioned, and you can then later on in the boot of Telindus NL, where Tom and his colleagues are present, you will be able to fill in the bingo and play the bingo game at the, the impact. So, but now, Tom, to come back to the impact, eh, on yeah. what is it making it? Yeah, first, maybe you have to go, come back to the bingo. If you play the bingo at our boot we ha and you win, we have a very nice set of sassy socks for you. I will explain in a minute why we call it sassy socks. Indeed. So, but okay, let's go back to the, to the subject and Tom, so how will this uh, approach of SASE and how will this approach of hybrid working you know, impact our IT and security management? Yeah, it, it, it is really a concern in the boardroom. In, the, in this uh, picture, we see um, the security officer talking to the IT manager and the HR director because the new way of working has impact on, of, on all these disciplines. Um, we have some resource data on that. 84% uh, of companies uh, support hybrid work. 50% of workloads run in the public cloud and 47% have remote working challenges. 
So Tom, okay, now we know what are the use cases, what are the risks, but okay, what is now the solution? How can we help our customers to solve those threats, those 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 complex use cases that we have seen, and what is the way forward? Yeah. Before we go to the to the solution, I would like to recap on what I just told. So on 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 one side you have the users, on the other side you have the applications. Users work from anywhere, use a number of devices, and um, the applications and software lives in a combination, in a multi-cloud environment, a com combination of public cloud, software as a service, uh, private data center and hybrid data centers. So basically, you have one, uh, in one direction you have the work from anywhere, in the other direction you have the cloud shift, and that creates two edges, the user edge and the cloud edge. And in this picture you really see the physical distance between users and application. That means you have to do something on the business continuity between this user and application. Uh, that's what you do on networking side, and you have to make sure that it's secure. The proposed solution here uh, is invented by Gartner, and it's a framework, and it's called Secure Access Service Edge. So secure access and connectivity to the new service edges, which are the cloud edge and uh, uh, the user edge. And then, um, to get full control, you need one more thing. That's digital experience monitoring. How to get uh, control over the user experience with the user working from home, using a home network, connecting uh, via internet or um, uh, other connectivity services like MPLS to their cloud resources. Digital experience monitoring enables you to proactively monitor the user experience and to help users before they, they lose their connectivity. So what you see in the picture is not um, uh, digital experience monitoring, this is digital experience polling, so you need applications to do that. Okay, thank you very much Tom. So uh, you brought us what are the problems, how we can, what is the impact of the potential problems and how we solve it. But okay, now let's, uh, of course, we have our second speaker here. So. Angel, can you please explain us how Fortinet will address the problems that Tom explained and what is the approach and how you, as Fortinet, will bring potential solutions to our customers here in the, in the meeting? Thank you, uh, Christophe, and thank you, uh, Tom. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask the audience to uh, nod as I speak because it's uh, very unsettling and not to, uh, not to hear us uh, talking. Um, so, as Tom has explained, uh, uh, it is more and more complicated for businesses uh, out there because the, the number of use cases that they need to be able to cover uh, is ever uh, increasing. And it's increasing for three different reasons. Um, as it was explained, we are changing the way of, uh, of working, more and more hybrid work. Um, you have to cover your global travelers when they are working from, uh, from the airport or abroad, uh, but you need also to accommodate new type of users, uh, such as contractor, for example. The second uh, reason why things are more and more complex uh, is because of the cloudification of application. Uh, we've been seeing for the past five to seven years more and more applications sitting in the cloud, but not only. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all still have some uh, legacy applications that are sitting in a data center or even on a branch that are essential for your business to work, um, or even application or resources that you need to put on a YAS. So all this, again, increase the level of complexity that you have. The third point that is also um, super important is the number of devices that needs to be uh, connected to, uh, to the network. Personally, I have three devices, uh, two of which are my personal device because we have bring your own device um, uh, applied in, uh, in the office. Um, and then you have uh, IoT devices, you have printers, really a whole raft of uh, different types of, uh, of uh, devices that need to be connected to your uh, business uh, corporate resources. Um, all these are potential open door to security threat. So not only you need to connect them, but you need to connect them securely. Is the convergence of networking and security. You cannot think about your connectivity without taking into account security. So that's the main point, convergence, security, uh, and networking. And the second um, point is consolidation. You will have to cover more and more use cases. You need a solution that can help you covering all those different use cases on a single platform. We're 
going to talk about other barbaric uh, acronyms, talking about firewall, CASB, DLP, um, secure web gateway, all this uh, you need to be able to cover uh, from, your, from your solution. So the benefit that you can expect from a SASE solution uh, and, and that level of convergence is first of all, the simplicity. You cannot address your security and connectivity, issue, connectivity issues with a point-to-point -point, uh, solution. You really need to think about how you can address it with a platform um, that will avoid uh, gaps, difficulty of integration uh, and lack of visibility. The second important point is consistency of security. What you want to make sure is that once you have defined a set of profile and security policy, those are being propagated onto your entire uh, architecture because you don't want to define them uh, multiple times. And thirdly is, of course, um, the, the user experience. No IT project can be successful if you don't have a correct uh, user adoption. So that's the three main benefits that you need to expect from, uh, from SASE. So what is the Fortinet uh, approach? First of all, we're one of the few players that have that ability to um, uh, provide a single platform that delivers all those different uh, use cases. We have the ability to uh, cover all type of uh, sites from a branch network, a headquarter, a data center, or a very small branch where you have a couple of people uh, working uh, there or even remote, uh, remote user. And then we can cover all type of application regardless of where they are, whether it's a SaaS application or an application sitting on, uh, on your data center. What are the security elements um, that we're providing? And I will just uh, brush uh, uh, that at a very uh, helicopter view. If you want more detail, of course, you can pass to the booth. But it's uh, typically uh, how you can make sure that your employee uh, serve the internet in a secure manner, uh, making sure that he's not uh, getting into a malicious um, uh, internet uh, website, or if he gets his PC infected with a, with a virus, that you can detect it quickly so that you can remediate and take action. Um, the second uh, very important uh, use case is um, applying zero trust within your, your network. You need to make sure that you restrict, you reduce your surface of, of attack by deciding who in your application, in your organization can access what. So for example, Robert from the finance department can access the financial application, but Martin from marketing cannot access that same, that same uh, uh, financial application. It has two benefits. First of all, Robert can work from anywhere, whether he's sitting in the office or working from home with the zero trust network access, he can access those applications without any problem. And secondly, you're reducing your surface of attack because you're reducing the resource to only the people that need to access it and therefore reducing your, your risk. Um, the last point uh, is still about control, making sure that you control your corporate data. It's, it's vital for a business to make sure that you um, are aware of the data that are uh, leaving your, your network and you always know what's happening. So that's why we have a CASB capability. So what is uh, CASB? It's really preventing uh, your employee to use applications that are not corporate application. If you decide that Dropbox is not an application that you want to uh, uh, your employee to use, you can block it. But also making sure that the SaaS applications that are corporate applications can be controlled and you know exactly what they're doing. So if there is someone who decided by mistake to uh, take your fi old file of uh, customer names with all, all their credit card data, you, you, you really want to know whether this uh, has reached uh, um, a, a Dropbox or something outside of your, of your network. So keeping the control on your data is absolutely essential as well. We talked about um, end user uh, experience management. Well, clearly, you don't want security to come at the cost of a performant connectivity. So the ability to measure the performance of uh, the end user accessing their corporate application is absolutely essential. Tom mentioned it earlier on. So this is part of the platform uh, uh, as well. Um, the, the other benefit I want to mention about the Fortinet solution is that um, SASE, well, first of all, SASE is a product, is an architecture and not a product. Um, why, why is it important? Because it's not something that you will be able to implement within your business from one day to the next. Uh, it's a journey, it's something that you will need to adopt gradually, and that's why it's important to find a solution uh, from which you can capitalize on the investments you may have done on your firewall, on your SD-1 uh, capability, and that you build on top, defining the use cases that you want to cover and adding gradually what really matters for your business. 
So that with uh, the Fortinet solution is absolutely something you can, uh, you can do. And just to conclude, uh, so the three main benefits I really would like you to uh, remember when you think about your SASE architecture is first of all, consistency of security policy. You need to make sure that once you have defined your security policy, you can apply them across the board. Because it's important for the second point, which is the end user experience. You do not want your user to have a different experience whether they're sitting in the office or if they're sitting at home, if they can access an application or a resource of your corporate, uh, uh, your corporate network, they need to be able to do it the, the same way uh, wherever they are, they are working. But on top, you really don't want to rely on your user to switching on uh, a client or something uh, to make sure that they are secure. And the third point uh, is, of course, about operational efficiency. In order to propagate the security uh, policy across your network, you need to make sure that you have the tool um, or the right partner in order to make that, uh, that possible. Um, that's the only way you can achieve uh, consistency. Thank you, Angel. I they know everybody will now be bazzled by the solution they can provide and uh, how we can approach uh, the way to SASE. So, but uh, looking now a bit back, and what would be now the key, so, key takeaways, Tom, that our audience today should take uh, from this breakout session? And what do you give as an advice, as expert in your domain, to the audience here today? Yeah, I think um, uh, SASE is not a forklift upgrade. Let, I think that's a takeaway. So it's. Um, it's a framework with uh, multiple building blocks and depending on your situation uh, you choose your road to SASE. So for example if you need to do something about connectivity you start with SD1 but another, uh, in another case maybe you need to reply uh, of, or uh, re uh, replace your firewall and then you, you choose a, a cloud delivered firewall. And, um, uh, keeping the road to SASE in mind, uh, step by step, you build your road to SASE and you come to a complete solution. And now, Angel, what would be then, of course, the, the Fortinet key takeaways on uh, the session? Um, well, first of all, of course, is uh, if I'm going to preach for my own uh, house, is choosing the right uh, security soli solution. So the technology is absolutely essential. But as I said earlier on, uh, there will be no project that is successful if you're doing your security at the expense of connectivity. So uh, choosing the right underlay that matter for you, making the right choice in terms of network architecture is absolutely essential. And the second thing, I realize that it might be a little bit complicated so for some of you to really apprehend all those concepts about, about security. So it is essential to surround you with the right uh, uh, partner. And this is why we're here today on stage and why Fortinet uh, really work closely with uh, Telandris and, uh, and Proximus. Um, you seek for advice, trying to understand what matters for you um, without digging into necessarily the technology, but managed services is, uh, is really key and I think it's their tool role. Well, I, again, I have to thank you all for being present at, at our breakout session. And of course, a very big thanks to Tom and to Angel to guiding us through this onboarding to SASE. And I would say one more last thing. Please visit our booths. We have all our specialists at our booths. So if you have additional questions, don't hesitate. We are there. They can answer you in-depth questions and also guide you on your first steps into the SASE road. Thank you. Thank you. Proximus next. Do -do -do. Think possible.